Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, everybody. Hold on while I start the timer. Oh, right. Oh, welcome back to Game Devs Play Games. We're in episode three of Tales of Zisteria, in case you missed the What's number that? or the title or a number of other things. Anyway, uh, we are now starting to explore the little uh, homeland of Saray and uh, Miklio. Oh, hey. Yes. It's There's been revealed so last episode. Oh yeah. It's been revealed last episode that uh, Miklio and Saray were both found and brought into the village, which is cool. By one sexy grandpa. Was, yeah. Oh, okay. Which which is huge, right? That's because huge. this is a town of Seraphim, but even even Miklio, he was found. He's not originally from here, so. Mm -hmm. But he's a so Seraphim a really as well. Overarching question: Wait, where did Miklio come from? And what will he become? And at the same time, is we also he have the devil. We also have Could the be. issue that uh, or Loki, if what's her name, Asgardian. needs to be sent out of the village. Uh, so basically, we're giving her some time to prep. Okay, and, Cujo, uh, I, I gotta tell you, I gotta beef with you right now. <laughs> Whoa. You keep calling her what's her name when clearly her name is question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Just because she's a she doesn't mean she doesn't have a name. And I swear to you, on everything good and holy, if you went willy me, I will <laughs> end your life. Hey, wow. Is this crest what I think it is? Yep. This is the mark of the shepherd. I knew it. The Chosen One who communicates with the Seraphim, controlling their incredible powers as if they were his own. The Shepherd! <laughs> Sound like your kind of thing? Maybe. I always thought that Mankind's Savior would actually look a bit more imposing. Be silent, Seraph Beast! I shall not. Hmm. <laughs> Excavated relics aren't play toys. True. She certainly is taking her time. I'll see what's up. So now Saray has the glove. Ooh. Um, but it's they, they kind of glove. They kind of joke around about it, right? But it actually holds a huge significance because it makes um, Saray the destined. Shepherd and from just having the glove, it seems a little weird, right? But yet, it's still well, because like the, I mean, all these games Enjoy do, yourself. they want to build up that one person, and they're not gonna, you know, give them a feather sword, feather earrings, feathered undies. I mean, God and forbid. miss out on the feathered glove to really put together that he's angelic. I'm sorry. And the shepherd. I mean, God forbid if they make the shepherd's <laughs> outfit. I don't know. Not covered in feathers, like from the you know, past shepherd. Hold on, when I think shepherd, I think Gosh, birds, really okay? Like, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. So, like... <laughs> I think shepherd, I think birds. <laughs> yep. I think Pidgeot. <laughs> this <laughs> isn't even my final form. <laughs> You've never seen Pokemon, have you? I've seen Pokemon all the time. Hey! So then, what's your hometown like? Well, I'm from the capital, Lady Lake, in the Kingdom of Highland. Lady Lake? Like in the Legend of the Sacred Blade? You've heard of it? It was in the Celestial Record! The legend says the Lady of the Lake guards the Sacred Blade, and the one who draws it becomes the Shepherd, right? Yes. It was a lively and bustling town, blessed with bountiful water. Rich in festivals and fine drink. Wait, was? Well, it used to be. Things must be hard for folks in the world below. Below? The land that lies beneath the mountaintops. I've never left home before. You've always lived here by yourself? Sounds to me like you're the one who's had it rough. <laughs> oh, let me help you get ready for your return trip tomorrow. You need anything? Bread, rations, stuff like that? That'd be great. If you have any tools or a sleeping bag, it'd be great too. Gotcha. Well then, first we'll need to do some hunting. I'll be your guide tomorrow. Thank you so much for everything.
Good morning. Good morning. Come on! Hurry it up, Mikleo! We ain't got time to mess around! Yeah, I'll leave in a moment. <sighs> Gramps gave me all kinds of things to take care of. I'm gonna be pretty swamped for a while. Bummer. Well, don't you worry about me, at least. So, Ray, Gramps only wants... Yeah, I know. Mikleo! Maybe later. Sure. Good morning. You sleep okay? Are you talking to yourself? She, you know what I hope really happens in this? Like, Mikleo is really just like talking as all the people and that's what she sees. It's like, you know, oh, sorry, yeah, because Mikleo, she can't like see. Like a, uh, a person with identity disassociated. Well, it's kind of like in, um, please tell me people have seen Fight Club. Oh, I, if you haven't seen Fight Club by now. I know. You haven't you've seen lived. Fight Club, right? <laughs> yeah, duh. Okay, good. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you do. <laughs> but what if it's like that, you where it's like he's punching you in You ask of the me face. a question, I answer it, and you're like, what the fuck? Why are you gonna be so sassy? Whoa, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa. So let's talk about the game some more. <laughs> yeah, video game <laughs> Cujo. Jeez. Wrong way. So, uh, something actually that, that does really bother me about this whole um, sequence yeah. is. Saray is basically doing everything to take care of this mystery lady, yep. right? Um, and name? and I, it, it bothers me because a she's a knight, right? And so presumably if you're going to be a knight, you should be pretty self-sufficient, right? You probably have survival skills, you have combat training. I mean, you're obviously a capable person if you can be a knight. Look at that armor. She could protect herself. Ideally, right? Yeah, right. So I find it silly that Saray is required to take care of her and, you know, hunt with her to get rations and stuff. I feel like she should already know how to do this. Well, I... Sorry, real quick. I do feel that something that, that that's already knowledge. Are you playing this right now, too? Um, yes, I am. Um, I feel like him helping her is not her saying like, I can't do this by myself. It's I think it's him still being like, no, you know what? If she's gonna leave, at least I want to make sure that she's got enough stuff ready and prepared. And I want to help her because at least I can do something additional. I don't think it's her being like, um, I need a bed to sleep in. Can you like, I don't know, make that happen? I, I guess from that perspective, you, you, you're right. It's not, okay. maybe, maybe I am pushing it a little too far, but I do more. think that they make her act a little more helpless than she should. Yeah, they want to make somebody that, like, heroin that needs saving or whatever. Well, they're, they're trying to build Saray up, right? They're, they're trying right. to uh, make their relationship make sense, right? Like, ooh, he went out of his way to help her. Now they have this strong relationship because they're uh, great friends, right? You know what I think would be more effective? If it was, like, a little kid or something, you know? And, like, you're seeing Saray, like, you know, show a little kid how you do things. Sorry. Really, what I think would make this um, more interesting in terms of character dynamics, even though you see it played out a lot as well, um, if she was a little begrudgingly like accepting the help, you know, if she was like, okay, I don't know the area, I guess you have to show me, but I'll take point. Well, I think you know, think... something that builds her at least some like. Yeah, I, I think I think they could have kept the same kind of idea, right? I think if right. they had changed the tone a bit. Exactly, because right now, but again, I don't. Well, see, I don't even know if it's an anime convention because there's plenty of strong-willed women in anime. Well, mm. okay, let's consider how her character is written so far. She's um, hasn't really mentioned a lot about her homeland, but as far as we know, she seems to be like a pretty decent human being. Um, that's not to say that there aren't things in this world that should like go against that, but at the end of the day, she seems to be like a decent human being. She's not going to be rude to people, because as a knight, you're supposed to be respectful and whatever. Um, Presumably. Yeah. Later on, um, there is a little bit of information that's revealed about the world below, and... I can sort of understand why when that stuff happens, basically everything's gone to shit down below. I'm just going to say that. But um, I feel like that should mean she's even more capable, right? Yes, but at the same time, she's running into somebody who looks a little odd in a ruin. She passed out in the forest. She has no idea where she is. If she immediately goes, no, I don't need your help, or I could do this myself, she's sort of automatically doing away with help on an area that she has no familiarity with. I think, I think 
to expand on that. It's also that she was passed out in this cave. She did wake up to two strange guys who took them to a strange well, place. Well, technically one, one strange guy. guy. She couldn't oh, see me. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, right. So one really strange guy <laughs> who's like talking to the air. And she's like, hmm, I don't get this world. I don't know. It depends. Like, did, they ex- did she explain how she got there? Was she just like, nope. she, she did not explain. Okay. But, but Saray didn't ask her either. Yeah, Saray's not very good at, like, trying to open up a proper communication. It's because he doesn't want to be rude. This is his first human he's ever come across. Yeah, you know? true. And that, that's a good point. I think, it, I think it does make for an interesting, like, oh, a human. How should humans be treated? Because I'm so used to these invisible people. I, I think I, I might also have a little bit of a bias just because I've played a little bit farther in, in the game and they do tend to be a little sexist at times. Um, and I feel like that happened a lot in these kind of games, just kind of sad, you know? Right, yeah. They don't need to make a lot of the wi- female characters seem so helpless or incapable. Well, well, and then what those do is that they'll overcompensate with another character. Right. Another woman who's very stubborn and aggressive, which ends up usually being the more interesting of the characters because, again, they're overcompensating for that one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Real quick, we did just see something of her saying, I've finished preparing the gel. Oh, yeah. Cooking is something that's been a staple in Tales of Games. Yeah. I feel like that's something we need to take a look at. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that more... Um, later on. In the oh, next did episode. I wake you? Sorry about that. You're sure into that book, aren't you? I've read it countless times since my childhood. One day, I want to explore ruins all over the world. Everyone who's read the Celestial Records says that, and I'm no exception. But sadly... Now is not the time for some jaunt around the world. For several years now, the world has been plunged into a nigh-incomprehensible state of chaos. Chaos? Mysterious illnesses, incessant storms, people bursting into flames. There are those that say, even the dead have begun to walk the earth again. Whoa, hang on. What are you talking about? You don't believe me? Or you think this is a joke? No, I... The situation is beyond grave. Huh? The chaos has caused abnormal climate changes all over the world. As a result, we are on the verge of enduring widespread crop death, famine, and starvation. And worst of all, are the rumors of governments planning to replenish their dwindling resources through war. It mustn't come to that. Can nothing be done? Who knows? There's nothing to hang on to but legends. Which is why you... Never mind. I won't ask. I think I'm gonna just hit the hay here myself. Sleep well. Okay, so it's really interesting, um, I feel like Tales, and really a lot of video games, what people tend to miss is that there is a level of political and economical and geographical, like, similarities to what's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. And what I think is very interesting is that they're hitting up on climate change, which has been a hot-button topic for the last, like, what, 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that they're talking about it. I feel like that's what I love about video games is that when you first play them as a kid, they don't really... You don't really see that, you know? Right, You just hear, oh, this is a problem of the world. But then you get older and you're like, huh, there is climate change going on right now. There are, you know, areas like, look at California, right? They're not getting enough rain ever. Yep. They're going through, like, crops, you know, getting destroyed. They're going through issues. And I think that's really great because I think in a way, when you get older, it makes you ask questions about why, why are they choosing to bring up what are our issues today? It kind of gives you a connection to their world. It, that, and it, it sort of has like this underlying uh, real life history incorporated into mm-hmm. the content, which is, I mean, artistically speaking, it's generally pretty cool. You know, and the more you play this game, you know, even though it does have, you know, its flaws here and there, there's always going to be something about a Tales game. 
that's going to draw you in. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the best one they've made or, you know, just one of the middling ground ones where it still has some interesting things. I think you're always going to fall in love with their characters. Mm -hmm. Like, even if they're kind of, you know, one-dimensional at first, there's that level of growth that happens. Ideally. You know? yeah. oh, ideally. Well, ideally that happens. I think Symphonia is a great example of growth happening. Yes. People breaking. Yeah. Um, friendships being tested. And and really haven't seen it. I played through probably more of Asperia than... I don't know if you guys played through a lot of it. I, I, I played play through a lot. I think there was a lot of interesting things with it. I I don't necessarily think it was their... their downfall. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. All right. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Yep. But don't worry, we got a lot more coming your way. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's this. That's the end of this episode of Game Devs Play Games. <laughs> we will see you next time. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, everyone. Yeah. So who thinks the Celestial Record's going to be stolen by somebody that doesn't matter. at some point in this it's game? Holy book. I just have a feeling it's going to get It's stolen. like a Bible. There are a lot of them. Oh. I wonder if they put them in too. hotels and people are like, oh man, the Celestial Record again, and then they steal it because you're like, I need to grab one from every hotel I go to. <laughs> need to get this shit out of here. Yeah, right. <laughs>